Hello. Uh, I'm recording my second video for today. Uh, I'll upload it tonight. Um, I wanted to make this a little bit better, but it's, it would take a lot of time to to get my other uh, computer and bring up the people's photos. Um, I'd have to go where they have Wi-Fi and um, use the Wi-Fi and access the photos from the web and there's quite a few people's pictures that I would have to get so I will just um, recite their names. Um, so I was going through Twitter the other day and I looked up a couple of people um, to see uh, just if they had posted anything. And I was surprised that they did because um, I had emailed these people a while back uh, about um, the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting that didn't happen on October 27th. Um, no one was killed at the synagogue. Um, I got some of my information from Robert David Steele. He owns the Earth Intelligence Network. And Robert worked for the Central Intelligence Agency for 20 years, uh, and now he works for himself. Um, so, some of the people that I gave the information to was um, Governor Oregon Governor Kate Brown, Oregon Senator Ron Wyden, and Portland Oregon Mayor Ted Wheeler. Um, Ted Wheeler's office told me to stop contacting them. He's the um, police commissioner, and on October 30th I had uh, my Fourth Amendment rights violated by police officers coming into my uh, residence. They were, thought they were going to assault me. It was an Officer Combs and Officer Hansen. Um, so I um, wanted to file a complaint against, uh, ethics complaint against the <clears throat> Mayor Ted Wheeler. So I sent an email to a, a councilwoman named Amanda Fritz, and I mentioned her name in a previous video because I had mentioned her name to um, federal judge Patricia, Patricia Sullivan, I think it was back in 2014. This is when I was arrested after I left a voice message for federal judge Michael Mossman that um, Flight 93 landed in Cleveland, Ohio. That um, it didn't crash in Shanksville as the uh, United States government said it did. Um, that the passengers were all interviewed in a NASA Glenn Research aircraft hangar by FBI agents. And that Robert Mueller was the director. Uh, and I told him um, my friend Sergeant Clifford Stone was in Shanksville. And um, he had relayed to me that he saw no evidence of an airplane crash. Uh, so, um, yeah, Patricia Sullivan had me put back into um, prison, uh, well, until I had to go see Michael Mossman again. Uh, one, one thing I can mention, I'm trying to keep this in order, but it's hard to keep it in order. Michael Mossman, um, oops, someone just sent me a message on Facebook. Let me clear that off. Okay. So, uh, Michael Mossman, in addition, he's done a lot of really bad things. I mentioned this to my federal public defender many years ago, uh, Francesca Fischero. Um, she had told me that Michael Mossman was a Rhodes Scholar, and I told her he's a Mormon. He's not a Rhodes Scholar. He went to Mormon school. He attended the Brigham Young University, uh, J. Reuben Clark School of Law. Uh, he recently gave a talk there in October. His talk was his talk. Uh, the title of his talk was uh, "How Not to Be Stupid," and he put me in prison for um, an additional thirty days and had me subjected to psychotropic drug injections after I told him about Flight 93 not crashing and that um, there weren't any children killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School. It's kind of an odd connection between um, Flight 93 and Sandy Hook. Is uh, Mayor Michael White, the former mayor of Cleveland? had a press conference um, and uh, on 
It was broadcasted on WCPO. He announced that Flight 93 landed. Passengers went to the NASA hangar. Well, Michael White lives in Newcomerstown, Ohio. And Newtown, Connecticut, is where Sandy Hook Elementary School was located. And no one died there because the school had been closed since 2008. So, um, I did some uh, research. A friend of mine uh, sent me a bunch of documents several months ago and contained in it was a lot of just um, information on space technology. And buried in that those documents was a declaration by Dr. Barry Trower, who's an expert on microwaves. Uh, and he, he uh, gave testimony here in Portland, Oregon in 2011. And the judge was uh, Michael Mossman, the federal judge. Um, there was a case brought against the um, Portland Public Schools by, by a parent. Um, and Dr. Trower relates how uh, Wi-Fi is extremely dangerous for children. Um, it, it causes cancer. Uh, the young girls, their the mitochondrial DNA in their eggs is being damaged, and they will forever, in, in their family, have birth defects. It'll never go away. Uh, so each generation will have birth defects because that young girl was exposed to microwave um, radiation in this classroom. And Michael Mossman had an opportunity to do something about it, but he did not. And I had relayed just from my personal experience dealing with him to my, um, to my uh, public defender, Francesca Fischero, uh that he, he's harming people. And um, I had filed a, a complaint with the Ninth Circuit, a um, complaint against um, judicial misconduct, and it was dismissed by a Ninth Circuit Judge uh, Sidney Thomas in San Francisco. Um, I had given information to Judge Thomas and also his wife, who is a regent on the um, Montana University, I think it is. Because uh, uh, I think uh, Sidney Thomas lives in Billings. I don't recall what his wife's name is, but she was um, a regent, I, I believe, on the um, University of Montana. And I was emailing her for a while and telling her, you know, that um, along with uh, Magistrate Michael Newman in Ohio on the Tenth Circuit and Judge Robert Katzman on the Second Circuit, Chief Judge, uh, you know, no one was killed at the synagogue shooting. Uh, Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting was fake. Boston bombing shooting was fake. Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting was fake. I gave all this information to them. I'm surprised after giving it to Sidney Thomas's wife and himself that he would um, dismiss my case with Michael Mossman. Um, I also wrote a letter as far as the um, uh, as far as the uh, synagogue goes to every member of um, the Supreme Court, all the justices on the Supreme Court, I got mailed all of them a letter explaining that no one was um, killed there. And uh, President Trump hasn't spoken publicly about this. I don't know why. It seems like he's being blackmailed. And um, um, I wanted to keep this um, focused on Portland. but uh, So this woman, Amanda Fritz, who was a psychiatric nurse, I thought she'd be a reasonable person. She's a horrible person, a terrible person. Uh, she should leave office. Um, she has, was playing around on Twitter and posting messages on Twitter, and she completely ignored the message I sent to her about um, no one dying in the Pittsburgh uh, synagogue. And I, I gave information to her on how I contacted Senator Wyden and the uh, the mayor and the governor, and Amanda Fritz was posting on Twitter, like, I mean, just completely ignored what I wrote to her. It was disgusting. She's a horrible woman. And um, Mayor Wheeler was doing the same thing. And like I mentioned, his office had relayed to me that to stop communicating with them. Um, Senator Ron Wyden, I never heard back from his office. 
at all or nothing. It was Senator Ron Wyden who had recommended Michael Mossman to um, President George Bush for Michael to be a, a federal judge. And then it gets approved by the Senate. So I had complaints against um, Michael Mossman as well as informing um, Senator Wyden that no one was killed at the synagogue and he was he has no heart. No, no thanks or anything. He just completely ignored me. The same thing with uh, Senator Merkley when I was contacting him. Of course, I, like I mentioned, the Portland, Oregon police told me to stop all communications with Senator Merkley. So I don't contact him at all, even though he sends me letters every once in a while. Uh, I was told by the Portland police not, not to contact him. And I gave this information to the FBI. I also gave it to... Um, Senator Johnny Isaacson, who's the chairman of the Senate Ethics Committee. I had a lot of complaints filed with uh, Senator Isaacson. Um, I complained about Senator Merkley, uh, Scott McGuire, his state operations director, and attorney Joel Kikorin. Uh, Joel was assigned casework of mine. I had a complaint against my federal public defender, Francesca Fischero. That's, that's the attorney who told me that Michael Mossman was a Rhodes Scholar when actually he never, you know, he only attended Mormon schools. And so she lied to me. She never did any research, wouldn't talk to anyone. Um, and um, so, and then I checked the, the, the Twitter account for another person, Vanessa Nordyke who was the president of the Oregon Bar Association, she she stepped down a couple of days ago. But I, I emailed her back in, around the beginning of December. Never got a reply back from her. I think she is the assistant attorney general in Oregon. I emailed her about three times, I think. I told her about what my case is, what the case is with Joe Corrin, the attorney who works for Senator Merkley, who's filed a frivolous stalking complaint because I wrote a letter to his home and uh, asking for help with my case because he wasn't communicating with me. I had never spoken with him at all except for one time over a year ago and this is before I had my casework uh, submitted and he lied to me on the phone telling me he knew someone who lost a leg in the Boston bombing and the Boston bombing was fake. No one died in the Boston bombing. Uh, I had a similar experience I mentioned uh, with M Mark Cuban, the multi-billionaire owner of the Dallas Mavericks basketball team. I had uh, emailed him thinking it would be helpful for him to have the information that no one was killed. And he was from the, he was lived, lived in Mount Lebanon, which is near Pittsburgh, and he emailed me back and was cursing, using profanity, told me to crawl back under the fucking rock I came from that he knew people who knew people that were killed. So Mark is a liar. That's why I reported him to the Texas Rangers, the FBI, and the Dallas Police Bureau, as well as uh, notifying his business partners, Ann Schultz Entertainment, Creative Artist Agency, CBS, and um, Ryan uh, Seacrest Entertainment. Uh, they're all partners with uh, Mark in a company called Access TV. I hope it goes out of business. He's an absolutely horrible human being. And so is his brother, Brian. It was Brian had sent information to the U.S. Marshals back when I was arrested at the library uh, in Portland, Oregon. I had actually sent an email to Mark, um, or to, I'm sorry, to Brian from the library. That's how the Marshals, I guess, knew, to, knew where to go to get me. They knew I was hanging around at the library. And that's where I was told to wait for them after I got back from New York. Uh, Mark's family is really messed up. He's a horrible person. Uh, and so is Brian. Uh, Brian is just a drunk, an alcoholic, uh, drug user. Um, and he had all kinds of issues with mental problems in the past. Um, he's just a really messed up person. Um, and um, so, yeah, Vanessa Nordyke um, did nothing, and she was posting on Twitter. So I filed a complaint with Oregon State Bar. 
she was the president of the Oregon State Bar. Now she's got a complaint filed against her. Uh, Governor Kate Brown, nothing from her office. Um, Nick Blosser is, um, he used to work at a winery that I believe he owned. Uh, he is the chief of staff for Governor Kate Brown. And his wife is an absolute horrible person. She's a, a waste of uh, time and energy if you ever try contacting her. Her name is um, Deborah Kafori. She's the county chair of Multnomah County. I spent five years asking her to help me because I was abused in the Multnomah County Jail back in um, 2013. This is when I was arrested by Detective Tony Harris after he threatened to break all the windows in my house. Um, he was um, told to come out to my residence by the New Haven FBI office. Um, the agent in charge there was a woman named Kimberly Shea. She now works for um, Brookfield Property Partners in uh, Manhattan at 200 Vesey Street. She's in charge of security for the New York region. region. I never received a reply back from Kimberly or an apology. Uh, not, not an apology, not, not a single I'm sorry or nothing. Um, it's interesting that Kimberly should go to work for Brookfield Property Partners because I was born in Brooklyn. Uh, my last name is Perfield. And uh, Kimberly's from Omaha. She attended, I think it's Creighton or Creighton University. That's where she got her law degree. It's a, it's a Roman Catholic uh, Jesuit university. And Omaha, Nebraska is where Warren Buffett lives, the chairman of Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, Kimberly's aware of that. And I had uh, been communicating with Warren's office uh, since like 97. Um, sending letters occasionally him to him and then Charlie Munger down in Los Angeles. And I didn't know it at the time until I got my FBI report in 2015 that the Berkshire office was reporting me to the FBI every time I made a phone call or sent a letter. And in the, in the FBI file they have something called a threat mechanism and all of that was negative. I was never making any threats to anybody but Berkshire kept reporting me. Um, it's terrible. Terrible people. Uh, Kimberly's husband, Jim Shea, works in New Jersey. Um, and um, never heard back from him either. Um, so let me see, I got uh, Mossman, Tony Harris. Uh, Rodney Schaefer and Lieutenant Penna uh, work at the Multnomah County Jail. They were the ones that abused me. There was a third deputy, but I don't remember his name. I filed a complaint with the um, Multnomah County Sheriffs. They're overseen by Deborah Kafori, the county chair. Uh, but like I mentioned, Deborah's a terrible person. She never replies back, ever. She never has anyone working for her reply back. I did this for five years. It was, I don't know why I did that for five years. Um, but uh, I, I did complain to the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office and they replied back, well, maybe next time you interact with the uh, Sheriff's Department you'll have a better experience. Uh, they're sick, sick people, really sickening people. Well, Mike Reese is now the Sheriff. Um, he was the police chief back in 2013 when I was arrested and I'm sure he knows who I am because my uh, federal public defender, Fender, Francesca Fischero remembered me from seeing me on television and in the newspapers. Um, so, uh, let me see here. I mentioned in another video a Judge Thomas Ryan, who I believe may be a um, pedophile, because he did something that was kind of strange to me in the courthouse hallway one day. He was like wiggling on his fingers like this. And he looked over at me and he never moved his hand from his side. And it was right at crotch level. We were standing about 30 feet apart. And I, I guess people could interpret that different ways. Uh, um, I was really uncomfortable with it. I've never experienced anything like that before. I thought it was kind of creepy. And I mentioned it to Janan Stoll and Francesca Fischero when I had my federal court case. In a, conference room in the Federal Public Defender's Office and Janan said, oh, he was waving at you. 
And I replied, well, that's an unusual place to wave to someone because that's where my penis is. Uh, and then I remember hearing that he was coaching children's basketball.